So the fourth method, method which I, I, you know, I, I read it and I'm in total agreement with it, uh, and I think it's something that many people forget. Uh, you, you call it the sarcasm is so awesome method, yeah. <laughs> and, and I love it. Um, yeah, go ahead and share a little bit more. Sure, sure. So right, that the title is yeah. it, is perfect because yeah. when you say the sarcasm is so awesome right, right. method, totally. yeah, you're really saying it's not right, okay. and it's and, and there's there's real danger. Yes, in yes. being sarcastic. So let's it's, distinguish between yeah. sarcasm as a communicative tool yeah. Yeah. between friends, yeah. uh, even between teachers and students when learning is not in the air. Right, right. It's a way to communicate. It's a way to connect, and I use it. And it's a great comedic tool. And it breaks the ice. Mm -hmm. And it's art, it's another art form. Mm -hmm. So I'm not taking sarcasm sure. away yeah. from anyone watching. I'm not taking your sarcasm away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It has to do with the learning spaces. Right. When the learning is in in, th in the th when we're in the throes of learning. Yeah. When learning is in the air, we have to realize that um, learning is the ultimate act of vulnerability. Yeah. We're opening up our hearts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we, we are, could be devastated or embarrassed yeah. or have anxiety or, or feel ups, upset or sadness if we can't get it right. Yes. So the last thing you need is anything that can be misconstrued, Exactly. anything that can go off the rails. Yep. So these are the conditions when sarcasm is not okay, mm -hmm. in my opinion, yeah. I believe this. Yeah. When students are confused. Mm -hmm. Stay away from sarcasm. Absolutely. When students ask a sincere question, right? A sincere question. An example of that: one time in the classroom, like it was three or four or even five times. Um, When's the test? When's the test? Yeah, it was happening. Yeah, yeah. And it was written on the board. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And, <laughs> yeah. See, this is good. I love see, it. you have to laugh at it's these so things. Good. And the temptation, the yeah. temptation, was to be like just being, being sarcastic and saying things like, please don't listen harder or something yeah. that, you right. know, like, right, 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 right. we haven't been here the whole time. Yeah. So, something, I, I, I can't even get the yeah, joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't even get the joke because right. it just doesn't feel right. No. You have to just, you have to be real. Yeah. Even if it means, you know, Billy, we need you to do a better job of paying attention in right. class. Right. I've been there. Yeah. It's on the board. Yeah. Is there any other questions about when the test is anyone? Okay. Right. We'd like to move on. Right. Right. Totally. So you're you're being serious. Yeah. And you're telling them what you need, and you're not being sarcastic. Yes. And so and and the last condition is, anytime, a, a, even one percent chance that our words can be misconstrued. Yep. Yep. Because if you've ever seen the look on the student's face when you made a bad joke. Right. Because I have. Right, yeah. The wall. Yeah, it's just, It's that, and you, we've lost them. Well, we've lost them. and the other piece about sarcasm is that a lot of times our kids are not actually developmentally ready for, for some of our sarcasm. Right, especially young, you know? young kids. Yeah, especially yeah. young kids. And yeah. so, and even in high school, you know, I thought right. there are more, I've seen like, you know, teachers have, you know, that as well where you're being sarcastic and kids are, are sort of laughing with you, but you're not 100% sure if they totally get it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. And so, because um, they don't want to be you know, left you know, alone or, or, or look like they don't get it. Right, and, right, right. And if it, can, it can add um, a level of, um, it can add murkiness to yeah, the relationship. Right. And so I, I, I try to stay away from mostly. However, for sure, it can be used as a comedian too, but I love that you delineated Right. And sure, hey, this is this is where where it's ought to be completely right because avoided. they'll they'll personalize it. Yeah, and, it, and it's a problem. Yeah, and, it, and if that wall goes <laughs> up, if they become bitter, that's the result. oh my gosh, yeah, they become bitter, and they'll have their guard up. Yeah, we lost, we lost them. Yeah. It, it, it can hard sometimes be very difficult to get back. Yeah, it's yeah. very very difficult to get back, and that's where a repair attempt is really powerful. You know, trying to apologize or whatever, but right. yeah, it is. It's hard to, to to get that back. Yeah. All right. So the next method is um, do you speak body language method? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that title. <laughs> so absolutely, yeah. Um, this happened on the plane today. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a dad and his daughter mm -hmm. and uh, she said, dad, dad, look at this. Dad, is this pretty dad? And he was doing this, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so this is an art form too. We have to learn how to reconcile this thing. Yeah. Because even imagine during this whole time, I'm making eye contact yeah. with you, but I'm holding this. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, right. that's a great point, Ronnie. Yeah. Like that would not it wouldn't fly. Right. So everything that we do in body language matters. You know, yes. Or like here. Yes. That we're that we put close a computer. Yes. Yes. That, that we're with we you put the thing. Yeah, we put the thing away. Yeah. That that we're completely free in our minds. It's yeah. the hardest thing to do. That you're not just for waiting sure. for your chance to talk. Yeah. That you're you're just you're curious and and have your empathy open. Yes. And and these types of things really matter. I, I once had a, a mom call me um, from watching the videos. Yeah. And she said something, this was a video from 10 years ago. She said, when a student asked the question, I was just like, yeah, what was that? Mm. I stopped writing. Yeah. Yeah. What, what were you asking? Boom. It, boom. Yeah. It's an impact move. Oh, 100%. Boom is impact move. Yeah. And uh, it's being fully there with them. Yes. Yes, and yeah. and that and that that energy matters. Yeah, probably more than the words. Right, because they're the first 100%. thing that happen, the first thing that goes on. Yeah, and uh, it's the thing that can sustain. Yes, you know? and so well, ninety-five percent of communication is nonverbal. So being able to shift your body, being able to move, being able to get down to their level, being able, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good one. Right? All of those things, and then the eye contact, right? right. right. All of those, is huge. Yes, yeah. So yeah. That, that's that's really important to, to speak that language. Hey, it's Robert. There is a problem recording number six on the Response Ninjas. So it's a chance for me to come outside this beautiful day and talk about what it is. And it involves this ladder. So this is Response Ninja Methods number six called the I See You, Hear You, and Know You Method. So one of the kisses of death for any teacher is when a student says that they're bored or disinterested or are disengaged with whatever topic that we're presenting. So the challenge for us is to come up with reference points or interest points within the students' lives, specifically to them, that connect to whatever it is that we're teaching. So for example, earlier this year, I had a student um, and we were talking about what the lateral area of a 3D shape is. And so I know that she's a dancer. So I asked her, if the dance coach asked you to move laterally on the dance floor, where would you move? And uh, she didn't know. And so we taught her how lateral movement means side to side, moving left to right like this. Or let's say if someone likes to work out, right? They might know what the lat muscle is. Latissimus muscle is right here on the side, you know, connecting to the back. Or even with uh, the word latitude, that could be one that spans horizontally around the globe like this, side to side, measuring this like horizontal positioning. So that's another way to even weave in what they already know and are interested in with what they need to know. And so the reason for the latter is now we're going to talk baseball. So baseball reference. Just last week I had a student and I know that he's a catcher, plays right here on the baseball field, right there. And I asked him, which is the easier throw? Is it from home plate here to second or home plate here to first and uh, his answer actually surprised me he said that it's an easier throw for him personally to throw to second and that led to a whole dialogue about the hypotenuse of a right triangle so if you know that if you're familiar with baseball you know that this is first plate uh, first base and then that's second base over there and that forms a right triangle and the connecting uh, line from home to second is the long side of a right triangle called the hypotenuse which we could actually mathematically determine is the longest side of this triangle right here going from there to there and it was really interesting because he talked about how it's harder for him to throw to first because he has to turn his body um, whereas to second he's already facing second so it's a easier throw for him even though it's further away you could talk about how much further away it is based on comparing the length of the hypotenuse to the I mean I'm already descending into a math lesson here <laughs> so I mean look that's that's basically the idea it's I wove in or weaved in 
a reference to what he already knows. Um, and uh, it got him interested. So anytime that we can see our students, hear them, understand them, um, paint a picture based on their understanding of a certain topic, then, uh, then we're winning because it's not something that's distant for them. It's something they can actually latch onto and, and understand and hold onto and actually be memorable and stick over time. So that's response ninja number six. You can tell us to creep in to their learning without them knowing that you're doing it by uh, referencing their common interest points.